Time now for our eat clean and get results presented by Clean Simple Eats. McQueen's been everywhere, Mara. She has been. 24 minutes, 22 points. And that is the picture of efficiency. 9 of 13 from the floor. Inside out dribble. Finds her teammate after she draws all the attention. Back door cut. She makes basketball look easy. Out of Hennifer, Utah. You go to Las Vegas for the Pac-12 tournament. And the town of Hennifer shows up. They travel as a pack throughout the casino and the arena. And you just say... There's the uh, Kenny McQueen fan club and family. Hey, it's an easy road trip. It's not, it's not so bad to make that trek. See what the Cougs can do here. They had a big second quarter. They won that quarter 24 to 20, but the other two, 10 points in each one, just hadn't been able to find the offense in the first and third. And Kira Gardner gets the start this quarter. So does Alex Coville. Shot clock winding down. Gardner shot just missing. Peely gets the board. Jenna Johnson trying to get it to her. Here's McQueen. Villa picks her up. Vieta around, held that follow through for quite some time. That's her first three of the game. Utah. 10 of 21, and 10 is the magic number. Yep. They're 14 and 2 when they have 10 or more threes. Eleanor O'Bellion. It makes all the difference to this group. And they need just a couple more threes to set a new season record. The shot, just short. The play of White, 10 minutes, seven points, five rebounds. She has tied a career high. I couldn't believe she had five rebounds because it didn't feel like she'd been out there a lot of time. But you're right, so efficient in the amount of time she's been there. She brings it up. Spacing by the Utes. Vieta passed everybody, couldn't finish. She was right there. Maybe surprised. Gonna have a nightmare <laughs> over that one. Yep. So open. Make the tough ones, miss the easy one. Cooks are a big shot blocking team. Maybe feeling as though somebody would eventually come over. Villa using the high screen. She gets an opening. Lefty layup. Ah, oh, just too much. It's been tough. Washington State's been one on one so much of this game. They just have not been able to really find open people. Peely with the handoff. Vieta left side, sticks it. Couple of them now from the left wing. It's a challenge, isn't it? They get hot, and it's hard to cool them off. Especially a player like Vieta with her quickness. We've seen what she can do with the ball in her hands, taking off to the rim. It's like, how close can you get to her to be able to stay with her if she blows by you? Vieta, 13 points, six assists, just one turnover. Efficient. Nice floater. Doesn't go down. Nice look and the right idea. The freshman out of Italy. Peely, way outside. A pass instead. Help D there from Gardner, and she's going to push. Villa out running. Defense to offense for the Cougs. Beautiful job, and what a pass. For two. It looked like Peely was going to take the shot. Instead, she was trying to loft it up to Jenna Johnson down on the block. Take away. The defense read it. White comes up with it on the left side, banks it up good. Lonnie White with nine points. This is the preps against McQueen for a couple years, and that'll sharpen you up on that kind of a move, how to get open. Great pass from Peely. Utah will await their final game. It'll be this Saturday, Senior Day. Washington will be in. There's a ball in the middle of the floor. Small. Basketball on the court. No one needs to yep. step on that. <laughs> not, not this time of year, that's for certain. How about the passing? Pass it ahead, just a beautiful bounce. 
Way to catch it, control it, and then finish it. Keely with another double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds, three assists. Yep, she'll take a seed, her fourth double-double this season. And there's a takeaway by A.T. Kind of a quiet game for A.T., just nine points. Inside, Mercatete back in, lefty layup good. It's been solid, 12 points in 15 minutes. minutes and now another takeaway the turnover for Utah a chance for the Cougs Gardner pulls it up around and in I've been impressed with her and I'm right there with you see if she can get some more minutes as they're still trying to kind of figure things out that Ledger Walker yeah almost another takeaway by the D and they do hands that time to Hina Gardner out running the layup she gets fouled and she'll go to the line so the Cougars on the attack yeah impressive minutes for Gardner great hustle getting up and down the floor making it happen and a 7-0 run for Washington State Gardner making a difference off the bench we'll take the timeout Back in Salt Lake City, the NCAA tournament projections, Pac-12 schools, Mary, this is a possibility. The final reveal is coming, coming out shortly, momentarily. momentarily but this is bracketology, the yeah. latest bracketology by, by Charlie Cream. Another one will come out tomorrow, Friday. They come out Tuesdays and Fridays. Yep. Stanford a one, but how about UCLA, USC? As twos, Oregon State, can you imagine hosting at Gill Coliseum? Oh, my goodness. Colorado, a four. Can Utah knock on the door and get home for first and second round? Yep. Arizona is playing great basketball. They're sitting at eight and eight. They're 500 in conference. What a weekend. The huge upset of Stanford last weekend. We were there. Yep. Can they upset USC or UCLA this weekend with a packed McHale Center? It would be huge if they could. Utah hosted last year, made their way to the Sweep 16 round after that, and a loss to the eventual champs, LSU. As Gardner one for two from the line. Peely's come back in. The score matters. Utah needs to hang on to this and show that they've been in control. Peely weak side. And over to Hina. Jesus, did you see that? I just got Peely. That was that was like leapfrog on on leap leap year day, Mayor. Oh, that is a good one. I've been told that the Utes have only played one other time on on the true leap year day, and it's uh, it was back in 1990. Look at you digging deep for knowledge. <laughs> That's about all I have for you. But there you go. Four minutes left. Washington State, you said it, they'll head to Colorado. They get it into Peely, she has to her totals. Deja Young with the assist. Beautiful, beautiful assist from Deja Young. 24 assists on 32 baskets by the Utes. Gardner, Gardner. Side, rattles in the three ball. She's got 10 points. He averages three points a game. Hasn't had a ton of minutes per game. But now maybe she'll start to get a few more. Young takes it back door. Get the assist to Reese Ross, who's checked in. This is what happens. You're leaning forward defensively. When you're worrying about your, the person you're guarding getting the ball and knocking down a three. You're leaning forward. Go back door. Easy bucket for two. Yeah, perfect read. Gardner. How about on top? Fire. Is she playing around the world? Right side up top. See if she brings it down on the left side. And the next time, I love it. She's got 13. Leads all Cougs. Young needs some help. She picked it up. There's Wilkie. Gardner gave some room to Vieta. She bobbled the ball for a second. It's out of bounds. It'll go the other direction. 
So good D by Gardner. She lost Vieta momentarily, but caused her enough problems to force the turnover. Gardner, double figures against Texas A&M Commerce. So career high 13 against Utah. Very impressive. It sure is. I have a feeling we'll see a bit more from her in the Pac-12 tournament next week. Play like this. Using the Mercatete screen. How about another one? Oh, and an and one. Wow. So the three goes for Gardner and a foul call on Lonnie White. Oh, with a push. How about that? The handoff. White. Ooh. Tries to get through the screen. Lynn Roberts watching the replay and says, Look, come here, come watch with me. <laughs> Points up top. And as a coach, you love when the official comes over and says, all right, this is what happened. I had a great angle, and I'm not going to listen to you anymore because <laughs> I had a better angle than you did. Had they, had they, did they do that to you, Mayor? Yes. Did they every once in a while? Let's yeah. just get back in that <laughs> coaching box, and if you want to yeah. sit down, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> So the officials now. Fallon White, her first. Time for our Whole Foods Market official review. Take a look. See, making sure who's going to the line potentially. See if we can figure it out. White. Trying to get over it. Oh, it sure did happen yeah. before the shot. Definitely did. So that could change things. Look at Tete. Was it super set? I'll yeah, say that. Wasn't super set. I, I, originally, the other angle, I thought, okay, she was set, and then the, the contact made her lift her leg with movement, but you could kind of see her sliding left a bit to get over there, and then <laughs> yes. the leg up, yeah. But nonetheless, the foul goes against White, her first. The question is, will this shot count or not? No, they're going to say out of bounds, I believe. So just the first team foul. Well, there haven't been a lot of fouls with just two and a half left in the game. Yep, so the challenge working out for the Cougs. So great decision by Lynn Roberts. Uh, for Lynn Roberts, rather, excuse me. So no bucket. It'll be an inbound with just the first team foul. So we want them to take a look. We do have a foul before the shot. It's going to be Washington State ball on the baseline. So the foul was before the shot. Yeah. Good use of review and the coach's appeal. Yeah, certainly so. Just missing is Gardner. That one's tipped out of bounds. It'll go to the Utes with just a little over two minutes left in this one. And nobody understands net and what it takes to get an NCAA bid than Lynn Roberts. She has the math down. Yeah. She knows every point matters. Yep, they will take scores into account. White, and York, no good. Tasha Young just up above. I'm gonna call foul on Jenna Villa, I believe. Mm, just so a, strong. Just a great example of vertic verticality. You go straight up for an offensive rebound, it's yours. Yep. She did just that, second personal on Villa. And Gardner just a bit too close on that inbound pass. Second team foul, and that's her second. Vieta with the play call. Reese Ross back in for the Utes. So is Crisp. Sam Crisp in the high post. Vieta. And the D knocking it off her leg, and Mary, the reveal is in. 
Stanford three, UCLA four, USC eight, Oregon State 12, Colorado 13. We do not see Utah in that top 16, yep. so work to do yep. for the Utes. Something to note, though, those decisions made before these games coming into this weekend, is that correct? That is correct, this okay. game in progress. Yep. So not included in that thinking. Yep. So the Utes and the fans will have to wait and see and see how things finish up on the regular season, see how things go from here. Still a chance, no doubt. Washington State, the same. As Mirka Tete gets it to go. She's got 14. So Utah will move to 11 and 6. The Cougs will drop to 6 and 11. So the fight for the top four spots is on. Yep, it sure is. Buffs will await the Cougs for game Saturday. It's never easy to go. This is a tough road trip to have to finish it is. your season on, no doubt about it. Add elevation to that equation. Yeah. That makes it very difficult. Skip around for Washington State. The shot just a bit short. And Viedo bring it up, work some clock. He was really kind of spearheaded by Kennedy McQueen early, just the threes. I think it was Peely that hit the first bucket, and it was a three to start the game. Five made threes in the first quarter for Utah. That really just got things going. And it got Utah comfortable. It, yep. It's what their game is all about. Kennedy McQueen tying her career high with 22 points, four of six behind the arc. Going to get a chance to chat with her after this one. With White to the line. She's in double digits. Big game for her. Solid minutes. It, you're seeing her personality right there. That's what she is all about. But this is exactly what you need as you're heading into the, the stretch run, the tournament where depth matters. Yeah, she's quite the character. Most points for the Utes in quite some time. They started off the season when they had Gianna Neepkins and they had five 100 plus point games. Most points for them since February 2nd against Washington. They had 83 points in that one. That's a foul call on Ross. It's gonna put Wallet to the stripe. Washington will be in here on Saturday. They're in Boulder tonight. Three Washington's still on the bubble as well. They are, yep. These games are crucial. Remaining schedule. Washington State at Colorado, Utah. The Huskies coming in. And off to Las Vegas. They will go. Wallach, slow start in the first quarter, but kicked it up in the second. And just didn't quite get enough from her, but 10 points for her. And that's going to do it. Crowd on their feet. Liking what they see from this team right now. Lynn Roberts and the Utes keeping their hopes alive to keep moving up in the ranks. They still want to be one of those top four seeds no also doubt. going into the tournament in, in Las Vegas. And uh, they can start thinking about that and watching games tonight and see if Stanford can beat Oregon State at Oregon State. We're still unsure whether Reagan Beers will yeah. play or not. Yeah, going to take a little bit of help from some others. That's correct. Boy, if you, as we've looked at the schedule and the standings, uh, there's always a chance for that in the Pac-12. Washington State will have to regroup, and Utah will get a day to practice up and get ready for the Huskies coming in. That's big time play. Look at these numbers. 21 for Peely. Tying the career high is Kennedy McQueen. And Eshvieta was, was big in a lot of areas, too, and, and really looking to score more today. But six assists for her. She's so, been so efficient taking care of it. Yeah, she really has. And just so much pressure on her to do that game in and game out. 
And as they continue to improve and figure out a way without Gianna Neepkins. Getting ready to light the U up on the hillside. They love doing that. I'm told it does light up, but <laughs> it's something these teams have always enjoyed doing. And Sunday will be an emotion, or excuse me, Saturday will be an yeah. emotional day here as it is senior day. Yeah, it certainly will be. And we're joined now by our player of the game, Kennedy McQueen. Kennedy, uh, congratulations. Wow, your team came out red hot. We were talking about the importance of making threes for your team, and I guess you were listening to us. But uh, tell us kind of how things were going early when you knew it was just going to kind of be your night. Yeah, we were off to a great start. I think 14-2 or something like that. Um, we were just moving the ball great, and when we move the ball like that, it just finds the open man. And we, we came out the game starting like that, and we just finished the game like that. You know, Kennedy, as we watched your team today, to me, it's the most rested and energetic I've seen you in, in maybe six weeks. Did you sense that as you were out there playing? Yeah, I think, I think we just know, coming off a big win at USC, I think we just know we have to capitalize on that performance and there's no taking step backs anymore. And so I think we just came out with a, a whole new mindset, a determined mindset to just take steps forward knowing that tournament time's ahead of us. Take us back to last week, and you're in Los Angeles. Things did not go well at UCLA. That's not a you kind of game. What did it take to have that turnaround and play the way you did on, on uh, Sunday at, at USC? Yeah, I think just refocus. We had a player meeting the next day and just said what we need more of from everybody. If we, if we talk big goals, we have to show up and walk the walk. So I think just having that meeting, and then that's what you saw that performance on Sunday, and then we're just building from there. And how are you kind of breaking down? You've got one more regular season game, and then you have the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas. I know the postseason has to be in your minds as well. How How's everybody staying focused just one game at a time? This this game against Washington is really important as well. Yeah, I think when you have goals and dreams as big as this team does, um, it's not hard to show up and be ready. We're getting to the end of the season, Pac-12 tournament next week. Um, so we just have the mindset of one to know and just show up and get the wins and perform how we need to. Well, congratulations. You had a yep. big one here. You tied your career high, 22 points. Uh, the three balls were flying and you were hitting them. And so you're going to need some of that on Saturday. I'll carry it over. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Kennedy. Big game for her. And they will need that, Mary. We've talked about the importance. Now 15-2 and two when they have 10 or more threes. It makes a difference. It really does. And this is a team that plays very well at home. And they need to finish strong. As you see the updated standings, this is going to change a lot as the games continue the rest of the evening. But for Utah, you move to 11-6. Will USC or UCLA or Oregon State drop to 11-6? The, the whole thing's going to unfold over the next couple of days. It's, it's certainly something to watch. It is. It is definitely an exciting finish to the regular season as Alyssa Peely, Makes her way into the stands, lots of family and friends. Big game for her, giving some love, getting some love back. And uh, wow, she's really become such a fan favorite here in Salt Lake as well. Yeah, and her senior day on Sunday is going to be yeah. tough to say goodbye oh. to the great Alyssa Peely, an All-American a year ago and not looking like she won't be one again this year. Double-double for her today, and the Utes get the win. That's it for us from Salt Lake City. Our producer today has been David Feldman, and our director, Lori Brooks. For Mary Murphy and our entire Pac-12 Network's crew, I'm Crystal Blunt saying so long from Salt Lake City. One more to go in the regular season, everybody. We'll see you on Saturday.